Layer by layer, our region has been building on a strong foundation in manufacturing to create something entirely new, so-called 3D printing technologies that move beyond mass production into the realm of mass customization. Carnegie Mellon University has been expanding its additive manufacturing research activities, and Catalyst Connection is helping more of our region's small and mid-sized manufacturers understand the potential. Jack Booth is a professor of mechanical engineering at CMU, and Thomas Bloom is vice president of operations at Catalyst Connection. Welcome, good to have you. Thank you, Phil. Good to be here. Yeah, so this whole business, I mean, we've seen, you know, additive manufacturing, people talking about is 3D printing, makes nice little plastic trinkets and right. little toys for the kids and stuff like that. It's becoming a whole lot more these days. <laughs> yeah, so in fact, uh, about four years ago, uh, there was a breakthrough on the plastic side of things, polymer side of things, where some of the uh, patents expired on the more expensive polymer printers. And that spurred on the whole maker movement. And in fact, this is an example of the Carnegie Mellon uh, hammer slag hall that was actually created on a very inexpensive $2,500 maker type machine for polymers. But in parallel to that, uh, and almost independent of that, uh, there was a development where the fabrication of metal type parts, uh, and these are actually made out of titanium alloys, uh, metal parts could be uh, fabricated automatically uh, just like you can for the plastics uh, out of a variety of, of engineering alloys and that made it so that uh, additive manufacturing really could be a metals manufacturing process. And this is where it gets really serious. Now yeah. you're talking about <laughs> engines and all kinds of products you can make right out of metal. Correct, yeah. In fact, those are compressor blades which go into a jet engine. Oh, I called it. <laughs> uh, that's very good, yeah. So. Uh, 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 the design requirements for those components are very, very conservative, meaning that you never want them to fail in the jet engine that you're uh, w on the airplane that you're flying in, for instance. So uh, the fact that additive manufacturing is making a major impact in the aerospace industry is very important. And the Catalyst Connection has been partnering with CMU recently mm -hmm. to raise awareness. You work a lot with smaller and mid-sized manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Why do they need to be aware of what's happening? Um, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to the world of additive manufacturing, this can either be a threat or opportunity opportunity to their business. Uh, our long heritage of steel manufacturing in Pittsburgh, there's a lot of people that bend and shape metal in the Pittsburgh area still. And for them, this is an opportunity to get on board with something new and cutting edge, or if they ignore it, uh, sadly they could be out of business and, and find themselves on the wrong side of something. So uh, we have a passion for making sure they stay aware of that and making sure that they are, they're around for the next 50 years. I hadn't thought about that. You don't have to bend the metal, to, you know, make the straight right. metal and bend it if you mm -hmm. can just turn it out already shaped the exact precise. And you, yeah, and you may not have to machine it. So uh, mm -hmm. again, it could be a threat. It could be a new capability that some of these smaller shops, smaller type manufacturers have. And if they develop the expertise, then they can lead the way. And it can be uh, you know, a, a, a great way to go. And in fact, the, the, the issue is, is that both small manufacturers and the large companies, they're all scrambling now to really understand what the technology can do and how it maps on to the products that they fabricate. I, I get the sense even at Carnegie Mellon, you've been scrambling to boost your own capacity in this space, right? Yeah, so about, also about four years ago, we got involved with uh, what is now called America Makes. We were part of that original proposal that uh, brought that institute uh, into being. And uh, in, those, in the past four years, we moved from one faculty member being an added to manufacturing of metals, and uh, that was me, yeah, one <laughs> uh, to uh, we've got about, uh, about eight people on the metals side and about 20 faculty working at various aspects of additive manufacturing. We've got uh, uh, two different types of direct metal additive machines, uh, an electron beam powder bed type machine and a laser powder bed machine, and those are the two types that industry is most interested in. Hmm. And in fact, we allow outside companies to come in and use those machines. Right, well, when you talk about this with your clients, uh -huh. are, they, are they scared? Are they really fascinated? Are they embracing this? What's the reaction like? Uh, it's been a very interesting mix. I mean, you have the ones that are very forward looking, and they're, they're all about this. They want to learn how they can do it, what can they use with it. And there's startups starting out of their garages because you can buy one of these machines and start your own business. Get them on Amazon. Um, absolutely, yeah. And so it's kind of a mix. But I think, by and large, if I had to put them in one big lump, I think they're still wondering, is this really for me? Hmm. Um, I, think, I think things like partnering with Jack and his colleagues to let them see shapes like that because everybody still has additive 3D printing, I'm printing plastic trinkets or it's for medical parts. But or I'm talking just about prototyping, things. I exactly. want to see what the Correct. shape looks like. Exactly. It's got no real utility. Now it's got real utility. Yep, you can think of something and design it and make it in a much quicker fashion than you ever have before. And as more materials come on board, 
it's only going to get bigger. I mean, right now, that's that's the only other thing I think holding some people back. And that's an important point: is it's, this is a moving target, a very fast moving target. Mm -hmm. The individual, the individual machine makers, the ones that make the additive machines that can build the parts, uh, they're coming out with new models about once a year and updates at about every six months. Uh, things are changing very rapidly to address the needs of industry, and uh, it's really important for everybody in the metals uh, manufacturing uh, uh, industry in general just to at least get up to speed with where things are now and sort of where they're going. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Only a few seconds left, but I sure. wonder, I mean, this is happening everywhere. I mean, you mentioned you can order the machines online. Does our region have any unique characteristics where we actually could really be a leader in this space? Uh, yeah, we have a we have a history with uh, powder metallurgy companies, companies making the powders that go into the machines. Uh, so there are three powder producers in the Pittsburgh region. There's uh, one uh, company making machines, that's X1, uh, in the Pittsburgh area. And we've got about, uh, that we talked to about eight different companies that are currently doing something with direct metal added to manufacturing. So it's, it's users, it's machine makers, it's the powder suppliers, uh, plus, plus organizations like Catalyst yeah. Connection which are trying to you know, bring all those together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, metal forming is the biggest cluster of manufacturers in our region, so there's a lot at stake for sure. Wow. Well, fascinating stuff. Uh, additive manufacturing, that's the new buzzword. We've all got to take it to heart. Uh, Jack Booth from uh, Carnegie Mellon and, uh, and Tom Bloom from uh, Catalyst. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Good to be here. And when we return, Pittsburgh-based Kraft Heinz puts hundreds of college students to work making 100,000 meals to help stop hunger now. Stay with us.